Welcome back to Room Packs Res Ed Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Ramsdell. Uh, this podcast series, if you're new to it, uh, features a variety of topics of interest to hired professionals who work in and with university housing. Uh, so we cover a lot of different topics. Uh, and this one today, I think, is a very uh, unique one because I... Uh, you know, we're recording this January 2024. I feel like it's the right time of year to be talking about uh, creating a vision. I've been a part of different organizations where sometimes you're going without um, and other times you maybe have a vision that maybe is not super helpful. You know, it's too vague or not, uh, you know, uh, really reinforced or utilized and stuff. So I think it's really important, you know, for organizational culture to have a vision and to have a clear and concise and compelling vision that, you know, kind of reinforced uh uh, consistently and everything. So uh, that is what we'll be talking about today uh, and certainly how that kind of really shows up specifically in the world of university housing, residential education, whatever your institution might call it. So uh, we will start as we always do. Uh, Amanda, if you want to introduce yourself and your professional background and how you got to be where you are today. Sure, thank you. Um, so my name is Amanda Kinner, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and the Director of Housing and Residence Life at Ball State University. Um, and I've, here, I've been here at Ball State for about two years now. Before that, I served as the Executive Director of Residential Life at Indiana State University. And then I've also worked in housing at um, Penn State University and some of those campuses and at the University of Alaska Southeast um, in Juneau, Alaska. Um, so I spent my entire career in housing and residence life and excited to be here today. Yeah, and it's always nice just uh, talking about this and you know, we're kind of like starting a new season. I feel like I'm just sort of reflective in general, but we're like, you know, I got my start, as I think many people do in residential education, work professionally uh, there for a couple of years as well. So that's kind of the core. And I think at least kind of the uh, maybe baseline or kind of initial memories and things that I'm seeing in my mind's eye about kind of, you know, creating a vision where, uh, like I said, you can kind of have that spectrum of like nothing or something that's maybe middling and kind of uh, not super useful and other things that's uh can be much more informative and relevant and useful for folks as they're uh, doing their work every day. But, you know, we'll start with a very kind of just broad question. Take it as you will. What does it mean to you to create a vision and why is this so important? For many years, what I did for a vision statement is about every two years, I'd pull my leadership team together and we'd look at the website. What does our mission say? What does our vision say? Do we need to change any of the words and we might change a word here or phrase there, and then we'd slap it back up on the website, and we'd forget about it into two years later in the retreat, or we'd bring it out for um, onboarding a new staff during training or during new student orientation when we're talking to parents about housing. But that's really, it lived on the website, and it would be a conversation for a half hour or so at a planning retreat in June once every couple of years. Um, and that was really frustrating. Um, and so then I said, well, we need to start doing strategic planning. If we do strategic planning, we'll bring the vision, the vision to life. And so we do the same thing. We gather everybody together right after the halls close and we do this retreat and we talk about what are our priorities, what are our goals, what does the university want us to focus on? And we'd create this, this map or this blueprint or this really pretty document that we might share to some campus partners. We might um, pull off our shelves every once in a while when a new initiative was starting, but it really just didn't take a lot of life. And um, what I noticed was my team didn't really connect with it. They didn't really align with it. It wasn't something that guided our decision making. It wasn't something that um, really connected us to the work. And um, but that was what I knew how to do, right? And so um, a couple of years ago, my director for residential learning at Indiana State called me over winter break, and he said, "Amanda, I need your address. I'm sending you this book, and I need you to read this book before we come back at the end of break." And I was like, what is this book? He's like, it's everything. You're going to love it. And so he sent me um, the book Vivid Vision. And um, it changed my life. And it changed my team's life. Um, because uh, I learned how to craft something that was going to help my team know where I was trying to lead them. That was going to inspire them to action. It was going to help them to see themselves as part of the story. And it was going to really guide every decision we made and every experience we had both together as a team, but every experience we put together for our students um, for the duration of the plan. And then, and then um, it really um, inspired me to think critically about where was I trying to lead my team? What was I trying to create? What legacy did I want to leave? Um, and so um, happy to chat more about the book 
and and how it changed um, how we did vivid visions. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I get yeah, just kind of one core resource, and you know, we'll give the opportunity. There's other kind of uh, kind of tertiary things that maybe uh, have an impact here, but that being kind of like you know, if nothing else, like that, you maybe like you know, anybody listening, uh, if you don't take away anything else, like you know, go check out that because I think that would be sort of the handbook to you know uh, manifest a lot of things we'll talk about here. But a couple of things stuck out from what you were saying of like because I think that idea of the sort of like you know uh, meandering middle of like creating a vision is either like you know it's maybe just too vague or not relevant. So it's not, like you said, like it's just not utilized. It's not, you know, implemented uh, in any way. Um, or like, I guess that idea of uh, another part of what I was thinking about of like, you know, you put it on the website, like it's something like you should be able to be like held accountable to or sort of, you know, all of that. But um, I guess just like talk about that, I guess, of like that sort of place of like, you know, the idea of like creating a vision of what it means is that like from what you're saying like it's something that feels relevant that feels useful that feels like you know it is like something that you share out like with your colleagues but also sort of like with others i guess of like yeah like why is it so important like what the impact that you feel like it should be having like is it there's a lot of things there where it's like oh you were you were kind of checking off some boxes of like oh maybe we do like a strategic plan or we you know we do training we bring it up like so like that's the idea, like it was brought up, but maybe not enough or not in the right context or with the phrasing of it was just like, uh, you know, um, just not relevant or useful, you know, maybe it's too vague or, it's, you know, uh, those sort of things. So I think just like, because we'll, we'll move on to sort of the resident education uh, context, but like, say you've got a really clear, compelling, relevant vision, like what's the impact of that like why why is like going through that effort to make one that's really vivid and you know compelling like why is that effort worth it yeah yeah well let me i guess step back a little bit i think um for me oftentimes when those vision statements are one or two sentences they tend to be very aspirational very big picture very abstract um and and broad right because you have to make sure that my custodial maintenance team can connect with that vision that my student staff can connect with that vision that my clients and my customers and my consumers can connect with that that my leadership team my business ops folks and so it becomes so big and broad that people are like well how do i actualize it how do i actually use it to make a decision how do i live by it every day because it's so broad and fits everything um, and I think that's that's where I struggled is I had a, a team that was fantastic and they would have followed me anywhere and they would have been willing to do anything, but they weren't sure where we were going. There wasn't a clear, a clear path. Um, there was this big, broad, like, you know, we want to be all things to all people, but what does that look like when I'm cleaning a toilet? What does that look like when I'm doing an RA program? Um, what does that look like when I'm making a decision about whether to um, assign two students to the same room or give them a single. Uh, and so that's, I think, where we really got stuck was um, taking it from this big aspirational to really taking it to a place where my leadership team could look at it and say, yes, this is where we're going. And this is my specific role and what I need to specifically do to make sure that we get to where we want to be. Um, and so uh, for me, a, a vision has to be something that um, is very descriptive. It, as the leader, I need to help set the stage uh, for what we're trying to create. And, and so what that looks like is when you walk into our office, what are you going to see? What are you going to hear? What are you going to smell? What are you going to talk about? Um, when you um, are um, with our team and leadership meetings, what is that going to feel like? When you come into work in the morning, what is, what is your um, excitement about being there? Um, when we have a tough decision to make, what is going to decide, what is going to set the criteria for us to make that decision so we all feel good when we leave at the end of the day that we made the right one? Um, and to me, that really sets aside a vision statement that is useful and helpful um, and is productive and one that is aspirational and something that sits on a paper or collects dust on your desk. Dust on your desk. Yeah, and I think like... I guess that's what my mind was thinking of is the idea of like the statement itself and how useful it is, but then like how it's implemented into the culture. I guess. And like, obviously if it's a very relevant one, it's going to be easier to sort of like, because it could be like, well, you have the best statement ever, you know, the best vision statement ever. But then if it's like, 
not even like on a website. It's not anywhere to be found. It could be like, oh, actually, yeah, I forgot we did that. I'm not like, we actually made a pretty good one. Like if we actually tried to use that to inform like our our plans and our strategy, whatever. Um, so I think those are sort of the twofold things that I was thinking of. And then just that idea of like, you know, honestly presenting it in a way of like we want to be held kind of accountable to this you know like that it would be the way that you try to solicit feedback and say like are we living up to these sort of things um and i guess i wonder too because like i think this is probably some people's thinking about this is like trying to like kind of distill it down i don't know if maybe the book mentions anything like this but like is there like a good formula you know like structure to how these statements could be because i think you were getting it as like the way that you you know, most people start to be like just super broad and kind of vague. It's the idea is like, ah, we want to be the best, you know, residential education program in the world. It's like, what does best mean? And like, you know, okay, well then how do we get to that? And then like, you know, you can start to kind of interrogate each kind of piece and everything. So do you feel like there's kind of like a, like a shorthand formula, like guiding sort of ideas of like, it's got to have this sort of like general structure of like, I, I guess I'm assuming maybe it's like, an action and an outcome or something like, is there anything like that? I guess that you feel like you could kind of help people with as they're going on this journey. Yeah. Well, and, and, um, and I would say it's not even a sentence. I would say it's a whole document. Um, you know, one of the things when, when I was introduced to the book that I used, the vivid vision book, um, up until that point, I thought that the vision was something that I co-created with my team. And one of the first shifts that I had to make was no, as the leader, I have to craft the vision and it's my team's responsibility then to implement the, the vision. Um, and if they don't know what to implement, if they don't know where we're going, if they don't know what the big picture is, they can't do their job successfully. And I, I have to be willing to step up and take responsibility for really crafting what we want to do, what we're, where we want to be. And then I need to empower them and step out of their way so that they can really put into place the stools, the, 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 the steps, the actions, um, the stages to accomplish that work. Um, and that was a shift for me because I'd always been a, a, okay, we're going to have that one sentence statement up on the board. It's got to be very aspirational. Um, and in, in the book, they talk about, no, this is a three to four page document and really look at all the different areas of your business, your program and dream big. And so um, they talked about mind map and really write down like if, if money, if facilities, if a location, if none of that were, an ob were, were a barrier, what, what would your program look like? What would it sound like? What would it, what would it feel like in technology and customer service and staffing and hiring and training? And so I just had this huge document and just wrote all over it, all this mind mapping and words and phrases and all these things. And it took me two full days of just on my own thinking about this. Um, and then I thought, gosh, how do I put all this in a, a sentence? Well, you, you don't. Um, and when I got down and started free writing it, I ended up with almost 10 pages of written document. And I took it to my director and said, here, read this. What do you think? And he said, um, it's a lot. He's like, it's great description. I see where you're going. I see where we're trying to go. And I'm getting really excited, but there's so much here. Let's let's tap it back. Um, and so just rethinking and recrafting until I had a basically a story. Um, and it was a story of where we were going, where we were and where we were gonna go. And I it was really creating a word picture of what that would look like. And um, when I finished really wrapping that up and really fine tuning that. Um, I also realized that as I was writing it, a lot of times I said, our campus partners will say this about housing and residence life. Our students will say this about their experience with residence life. And then I had to pause and say, that isn't a vision because I don't have any power or control or agency on how they're going to describe us. But I do have agency on what we're going to collectively do within our unit. And if we do those things, then I believe that the perceptions that I'm writing about are what the students are gonna experience, is what our campus partners are gonna say. But I've gotta stop describing what our campus partners are gonna do, what our students are gonna do, and I gotta really start crafting a picture of what we wanna do. Um, and then when I finished writing that document, um, I took it to my leadership team and I actually read it out loud to them um, because I wanted them to hear it. I wanted them to close their eyes and experience and see themselves and see our team in that space three years from now. 
Um, and you know, I talked about wanting to be the premier residential life program in the country because um, our students deserve to have the very, very best, to have the, the most talent, to have the best programs, the best facilities to really get all of that. And so when I started talking about what that would look like at being a premier housing program, um, all of a sudden I had directors saying, oh my gosh, if we want to be the premier program, these are the steps that I need my team to take in business operations so that our students have a, a seamless process housing contracting. And my training person said, oh my gosh, these are all the things that I can do in training to make sure that we're delivering a prestigious national program. Um, and that's when I realized that that is what the vision is supposed to do. We need to create the description to tell the story, to help people see themselves in that space because when they can do that, then they start to think about all the steps and all the actions that they can take to make that happen. And that's what was missing in the past. Really challenging the kind of preconceived notions. I think like, I will admit like, yeah, going in is like, oh, it's the, yeah, it's just like a sentence, right? You got to make like a really good sentence and we're trying to just make like a better sentence. And it's like, nope, just like blow that whole kind of uh, paradigm up. And that idea of like, at least version 1.0 has to be coming out of your brain as like the leader of the, you know, the division, the department, whatever. Um, I think those are two really good kind of uh, takeaways for folks, but then even just like parts of what you're saying of like, you know, certainly, yeah, you could, you know, you wrote 10 pages and it's like, well, it's, it's gotta be as long as possible, you know, all the detail, all the sort of things. And it's like, you know, try to find, you know, a little bit of like, you know, uh, you know, brevity is your friend, I guess, like specificity and you don't have to sort of like belabor the point and like there, it should be, uh, you know, compelling in that regard, but like, uh, how you like read it too, I think it's a really powerful cultural thing is it's like, this did like come from you, even though it might've iterated over time and like having it, you know, be read in your voice, I think is just like a really powerful thing as like the leader of a team and, you know, kind of inspiring. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think just like moving into kind of, you know, the residential education context specifically, like, uh, to kind of build off that idea of like, okay, this is going to be like a multi-page document because it is like nowadays, like the work that is happening is very complex and, you know, it's going to have a lot of moving pieces. So like, you know, you could never hope to have something that would be utilized readily and relevant and all that if it was just this like sort of sentence where it's like, okay, we're going to just like, you know, dilute it, uh, you know, out of any, any sort of relevance because it's just, you know, one sentence, whatever. So the idea that you could really honor and respect and include you know, yeah, the the housing operations people, the facilities people and all that and be kind of maybe calling them all out specifically. So I guess just, yeah, I'll present that to you, I guess, like, how have you seen this specifically applying in the residential education context when you're creating a vision? Because again, there's usually a lot of kind of uh, specific areas in your department, but then also like the other collaborators and stakeholders and stuff, I'd imagine. Yeah, um, so um, gosh, I mean, there's all sorts of ways. Um, for the Reza team and just creating that culture, right? So um, as the director of a unit, I, you know, I wrote the vivid vision for our team, but then I would also encourage um, if you are a hall director or a residential learning coordinator, as we call them here, and you're running your building, you are the leader of your building. So how are you describing for your student staff, for your RAs, for your APMs, the way in which you want that building to operate, the way in which you want to engage with your student staff, the way you want your student staff to engage with the residents on the floor. What do you, what do you want students to feel when they enter your space? And so even in the residential education context, yes, you have this overarching departmental or divisional vision, but then take that and craft your own document on how that fits into what you're trying to do within your department. Um, and then I think the other piece of that is you're making decisions whether it be about programs or events or learning initiatives or learning outcomes, how does that relate back to that document? How does that advance the work? How does it help you take a step closer to that overarching vision? Um, and if it doesn't, how do we put that aside? Um, and I think one of the things we, we do in housing and resident a lot is we look around us and we see a gap and we say it's our responsibility to fill that gap. Students are struggling with sleep. Okay, we've got to do stuff around sleep. Students are struggling with alcohol use. So now we're the experts on alcohol education. Um, we're the experts on crisis um, response, on conflict resolution, all these different things. And we just keep adding more and more and more onto our plates. And when we're doing everything, 
there's no way we can work towards the vision. Um, when we're taking on everything ourselves, we're not able to advance what's most important to us. And so I think the other way that it applies to residential education is really taking a step back in the work that we do and saying, what are the core components? What is essential for us to do in order for our students to have a great experience, to learn what we want them to do, and for us to accomplish that vision? And if it isn't core, if it isn't essential, then we need to be okay to sunset it. We need to be okay to say, I'm going to leave that for this particular campus partner that's an expert in this, or I know this is important, but this isn't important right now, and so I'm going to put this aside. Um, and doing that frees us up to do the work that really is um, the most essential, the most core, and then allows us to advance to our vision. So I think that's also another way where we can kind of help prioritize in a field and in an environment in which we're doing a lot all the time. Yeah, I guess what I'm hearing there is like, and it's like this interesting sort of juxtaposition is like, you know, creating a vision, you know, it feels very broad and aspirational and that, and it, and it is, but even that, like, it is sort of setting a boundary, like it's kind of creating that sandbox you're going to play in. And it does like allow people to focus and like you said, like focus on the right things and all that, because I think, you know, I had this question on here and I feel like we've been kind of like addressing it. So I, I, I'll just sort of, you know, uh, integrate it in here but like that idea of like you don't have a clear vision everybody's kind of just working independently they might be doing amazing things but there's like no sort of like tie that binds or any sort of reinforcing point or you know uh, just 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 no structure i guess um and you know no consistency and all that because i guess I'll, I'll i'll change this question a little bit i guess too is like um the idea of you know if you're working with stakeholders or trying to like maybe um, show the impact you're having to higher ups or just anyone else or something like it feels like it really is conducive to that sort of effort as well, because it, you can always just sort of start to kind of draw a line of like, okay, you know, summary vision statement here goes all the way to like the program happening in the halls and the learning outcomes. And this one checks us off, which connects back to, you know, providing good service, which is a core foundational principle of, you know, vision statement, whatever. Like it just makes this sort of structure that you could be like, Hey, look at all the awesome stuff that we're doing. That's like doing all the things that we said we're going to do that serves maybe, you know, the university's whole kind of, you know, strategic plan or something like you can start to just start, you know, connecting these blocks and sort of connective pieces. Um, so I guess, can you kind of speak to that? I guess of that idea of like, this is something that gives structure and the right kind of structure and is conducive, I guess, to kind of giving that focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think the, the other the other piece that's so important is, you know, not only do we have structure and know what, what we're about and what we're going to do and how to make decisions, but it helps us to set boundaries for other people. Because if we don't know where we're going and we don't know what's important to us, it allows other people to come in and tell us what's going to be important to us, to tell us what we should be doing. Um, and I would much rather set the agenda for our team and for the work that we're doing myself um, than to have um, outside agencies or outside partners who may not be experts in what we're doing, trying to tell us what our work should be. Uh, so that has been huge too, um, to really be able to share with our campus partners. No, thank you. It isn't my RA's job to hand out your paperwork every week. It's not my RA's job. Um, to take that to take um, to take students to your program because that's easier than you having to do the work to get students excited about coming. Um, it'll it really it frees us to do the work that's important and so what others are telling us. Uh, but I do think that's true too in that we it helps us really tell that story of what we're doing. It helps us to really um, tell the story of where we're going in a way that's meaningful in a way that provides value and context. When we've appropriately, appropriately matched our work and our vision with institutional goals, with institutional values, um, then we are very well poised to tell that story and to be able to share all the way up. This is how housing and residence life impacts student success. This is how what we're doing really matters. And, you know, an example of my own current campus is um, my um, associate director, my senior associate director for years has been involved in living learning programs here on my campus. And he really built that from scratch um, and um, really pushed to have maker spaces built to develop APM for academic peer mentor programs. 
And over time, that work and setting that example and knowing where we were trying to get um, allowed him to build some really strong partnerships with campus partners. And that allowed him then to track data with student success. And then he was able to share that data around student success with the deans he was building relationships with. And then the dean started to take notice of, wow, these students are staying at a higher rate. They're doing better academically. They have a higher sense of belonging. And so the next thing we know, because we were aligned with institutional values, because we were really capturing that data, we knew where we were trying to get, um, and he knew where he was trying to go, now all of a sudden, it's in our strategic plan as an institution. It's being reported on regularly at board of trustee meetings. Um, people are looking to us and saying, well, and housing and living learning communities. So all those things are happening, but then also from the recruitment end, um, most campuses, we have students saying, oh my goodness, I didn't get my roommate. What are you doing during placement? And we're getting that, I don't care if I get, if I get moved from my roommate, I have to be in my living learning community. This is really important. Um, and I, I think that is probably, for me, one of the best examples of when we, we do work that aligns with institutional goals, and when we know where we're trying to go within that, we can really capture the data, capture the stories that are going to connect the dots, that's going to result in um, others seeing the value of the work that we're doing and being more successful for our students, but then our students also being able to make those connections. Yeah, and what it's making me think of is like, again, just, you know, like the lack of structure and all this stuff of like not having a clear vision. So it's like the, the impact of having it again, like uh, the focus I think would manifest in like, you know, that idea of obviously there's clear, th- like you're saying like retention and, you know, just like, uh, you know, folks like staying in the halls and all that kind of stuff. But then just like, if you're, if you're sending out like a feedback survey, like it would give you the language to say, like, not just like, Hey, are you satisfied? Like, yep. Like, that he it wouldn't really be like, well, tell me more. Like, why are you satisfied? And they could say like any number of reasons. You could maybe start to like ask questions in a way as like, do you feel as though, you know, your residence hall experience is, you know, doing this, that, the other thing uh, versus just kind of getting like, because I think that's sometimes the tragedy is like, you know, departments are like yearning for, you know, the idea of like, oh, I need evidence to show that, you know, we're having an impact, you know, students are having a good experience and it might be like, yeah, they rate it highly and you'd be like, but why? Like, well, we're kind of just getting all these random answers or no answers, whatever. It's like just asking really focused, clear questions to say, like, are we hitting in the areas that we said that we were, you know, aiming for? Like, are we, are we hitting right on the bullseye here? Um, you know, asking those residents those questions and that sort of thing. I feel like that's what I'm almost even thinking about as well. It's just like, obviously, yeah, just it's having this structure is conducive in so many ways to be able to show your work and tell that story like you're saying and then just like you'd have not just sort of like in a because i feel like anecdotes can be like a bad thing if it's just like that's how we're building our whole strategy is just people like you know just completely anecdotal you know sort of thoughts and experiences and everything but like if through a survey you are asking a question to get a good sort of response it's like here are quotes here are anecdotes that say I believe my residence hall experience is helping me to be a better community member or whatever, you know, like that sort of thing versus just like, it's fun. I have fun and all that. It's like, that's great. But like, I don't know, maybe not as compelling of a way to like justify living, learning communities or something. I don't know. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think it, um, it, it gives a common language for your team. Um, and so when you're talking about a common language, it allows you to um, share uh, stories that have rich description in them that are really aligned that were where you're really talking about the same concept. Um, so I think you're right. And, and, and I think, um, you know, I like to, to share it around. Um, it's like a photo album, like an old fashioned, um, I, you know, here's my photo album of everything I did this year, right? A yearbook, if you will. And you can really take those snapshots of different learning and then put them into like um, a week of vacation and or a month and or here's the, the growing and the learning and the growth that's happened over the years. So it really, it allows you to not only take those individual snapshots, but to tell that story over time and to tell the stories in ways that are interconnected. Um, and to me, that is a much more powerful story to tell um, to folks who are decision makers or to folks who need to know that than just little individual random anecdotes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, as we wind down, uh, I know, you know, Vivid Vision book absolutely be kind of the primary source here to refer folks to, but any other 
uh, resources that you found helpful on this topic? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think um, Essentialism is another book by Greg McCowan um, that really helps you think about what's core to who you are, what's core to the work that you're trying to do, which I think can help you create your vision. Um, and um, and then Simon Sinek's um, It Starts With Why or any of the, any of the, the videos that, that he does that talks about understanding what your why is as a, as a department, as an institution, but as you personally, what is your why? Um, because when you know that, people don't don't buy what you're selling, they buy why you're doing it. Um, and so if you know your why and you can live that out, that's going to attract people to you. That's going to attract as you're recruiting students, as you're recruiting team members, um, that will draw them in. Everybody's doing housing. So why is what you're doing special? Why is your particular campus, your particular program the place to be? Um, and so when you can articulate and describe that, that's what what's going to draw people to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so much, I feel like of this whole conversation, like there's a lot of like the emotions, the feelings and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like the idea that somebody would say like, like, oh, well, I know somebody would like work here or, you know, live in the halls and that sort of thing. It's like our rooms are great. They're big. And I don't know, they've, we've got a lot of amenities and all that. It's like, that's just very like the transactional side of it. Like you're just sort of like, you know, um, I don't know, like it's it's very logical. So it's like, yes, that that is helpful. But like, I think so much of this is uh, that emotional piece, the feelings and everything. So for sure, that sense of belonging and that I have a place to contribute to and I can take something away from it. Well, then I, I will give you kind of the final word here. Any just sort of parting bits of advice uh, that we'd give to other Residence Life pros right now. It could be like on this topic, just generally, whatever you, you know way you want to take it. But just uh, yeah, any final bits of advice that you'd want to give? Yeah, I, I think as you're as you're starting to think about your vision, whether it be in your building or in an area of campus or a department or as an institutional leader, um, spending some time just reflecting on that dream big, so big that those dreams are scaring you and, and really map it out and draw a picture in your head of what that will look like, feel like, and be like. Um, and even if that's the only step that a person takes right now, that having that picture in your head helps you to start making decisions that's going to get momentum to move towards that space. Um, so I think at the beginning of the year, it's always great to take a few minutes, reflect, write a story, think about where you want to go, um, and then make a plan to get there. Yeah. And maybe we'll have to uh, reshare this episode of the beginning of the upcoming uh, academic year as well. But yeah, this is, you know, new year, you know, new vibes, new goals and resolutions and all that good stuff. So hopefully this does uh, serve as good inspiration for folks. And uh, yeah, a lot of great uh, advice and resources and things for folks to check out and just appreciate you uh, taking some time to talk all about it for the show here. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.